Are you ready, Gibbs? There we go. Yep, okay. So we've just finished January 2023. So I want to do a bit of a roundup video uh, on a couple of topics, I think, really to cover January. One is it's been a bit of a turbulent market. The uh, EV prices have been changing. So I'm going to run through kind of how EV demand is and what's been happening on the market for pre-owned electric vehicles in particular. Uh, but firstly, I want to talk about our solar because we've just finished our first full month of our solar roof that we had installed and went live at the end of December. And we've had a lot of uh, interest from our first video about the solar installation uh, to follow up how it's going. So I've got the figures for January. It's obviously been the shorter days, the wettest month. And anyone in the UK will know it has rained rather a lot in January. Uh, we've had flooding recently and all that kind of thing. But we've got some data now. So what did we produce? And I'm pulling data off of both the Tesla app and also we've got an app for the uh, inverter, the um, inverter system. And the numbers are all pretty similar. Some slight discrepancies, probably through some losses, but not too much. Here we go. This is what we've got. So as a building here, the office, the warehouse, charging electric cars daily, running the heating, everything we've used here has added up to 2,353 kilowatt hours. Uh, so there'll be a lot more than a normal house, for example. Uh, of solar though, we've produced 610 kilowatt hours of that. So we're basically running about 25% off of the solar, which I think is not bad at all, is it? And remember, we're fairly high uses. There's a Model X charging there, there's a car charging down there, and the lights are on and such like. So 25%, uh, I'm pretty pleased with that for January. I cannot wait till the summer when much longer days and the sun's higher in the sky, so we get more continuous use. Looking at our solar panel, and it, we can look exactly how much each panel has produced. And it's a really quite an even spread, actually. So we've got 62 415 watt panels in three locations. So we've got that aspect of the, the warehouse roof. We've got the above the office here, which is exactly southerly. And then we've got the western aspect there. All fairly gentle slopes. So again, as the sun comes higher in the sky, we'll actually be producing more. But it's been a quite a nice even spread. So morning, you know, midday, uh, afternoon, nice even spread of light and production of energy, which is exactly what we wanted. 170 kilowatt hours of that energy has passed through our power walls. So we've got two Tesla power walls here. And what's lovely is if you produce electricity, it charges up the batteries and then you can discharge the batteries, for example, overnight when there's always an energy use here anyway. We seem to run you know, between 100 and 200 watts of static energy use. So uh, in the middle of the night when no one's here, we still have the fridge running, the, um, obviously the heating's all off, but the fridge is running, the fire alarm systems, the uh, other alarm systems we've got, uh, possibly computers on standby if they've not been shut down completely. We run at sort of between one and 200 watts by the look of it. Uh, so that will then drain some of the batteries overnight. Usually during the day, we don't need tons of batteries because if it's really sunny and we're producing loads, ultimately we've got plenty of cars that we can plug in and absorb any excess energy that we're using. And so we're starting to change a little bit about how we do charge the cars, make use of those sunnier days to put some charge in and such like. So uh, we're still adapting to that. The most we've produced in a day so far has been 37 and a half kilowatt hours. And in total, if you take that 610 kilowatt hours, by the way, produced uh, during the month, we had a bit of fun working out <laughs> how far you could drive an efficient EV. So if you take something like a Tesla Model 3 or a Hyundai Kona, which you can get kind of five miles per kilowatt hour out of, uh, multiply that, you've got over 3,000 miles of driving. So you're kind of pretty much almost London to New York. You're certainly New York to LA. Um, Guinness was working out some destinations. You can drive from London to Israel. You can go to Egypt. You can go to Iraq if you wanted to. So that's enough energy produced in a winter month to cover that kind of distance with just that going into an electric car. So a bit of fun there. Right, on to the second topic I'll cover for January, and that is the market conditions. Um, some turbulent pricing. We have seen uh, some prices of used EVs um, drop in throughout November, December because of the general consumer credit crunch, interest rates are rising, so people's mortgages are higher, plus the car finance is more expensive because interest rates of car finance has gone up as well. And some prices have been falling at the end of last year, and we sort of covered that in the end of year roundup video. So how's January been? Well, up until about the 9th of January, it was fairly quiet. It usually is a little bit in the first few days. Uh, but then it actually became a pretty good consistent demand and fairly busy. 
But of course, in amongst all this, Tesla did their price drop. Now we did a separate video explaining how much Tesla dropped the price of the Model 3 and the Model Ys, some of them by eight and a half thousand pounds. So of course, instantly that had a knock on effect on the used market. Hasn't impacted S and X too much because of course they haven't been available in the UK for some time. Uh, but the Model 3s especially did drop in value on the used market instantly. Of course, it had to react to uh, the, the new car price drops as well. So the price drop meant if you were a Tesla owner or you're about to sell a Tesla, it was a bit disheartening because suddenly your car was worth a little bit less. Um, but if you're a buyer, it's been good news because you can now uh, get into an electric car, Tesla Model 3 or Model Y for less money. And so, okay, we had to adjust the prices, but the buyers are there. And we've actually been really busy during the end of uh, January uh, with the demand and um, general sales numbers here have been fairly good, but we just had to make those price adjustments. We've seen a lot of Model 3s, especially in the trade, or people selling them because they're getting Model Ys and they're coming off lease companies. So it has been quite saturated for a few weeks now with Model 3s especially. And cars like the 2021 long range Model 3s, which are just great cars, and now come from kind of upper end of the 40s down to around about 40,000 pounds. So certainly more affordable there. The older one's not quite as affected uh, because they're always at the cheaper end of the market. But uh, what we've seen recently is a few pilot exchanges, things like Hyundai Koners and requests from uh, kind of BMW i3 drivers, Nissan Leafs, such like, who now can afford to get into the Tesla, which they couldn't before. So there's a few people switching around there. Now, in the, in the media at the moment, I've seen a couple of headlines around. I think there'll be more to follow saying EV demand's crashed, EV demand has dropped. Where are EVs in the market? How can we progress? You know, electricity is more expensive. There's no future and that kind of thing. Um, well, the data actually, if it depends which element of the data you look at, as always, certain aspects of the media will try and pick all the negative uh, things. So... I'm going to talk about uh, data that I can pull, for example, from AutoTrader is one source of data that we have. Um, and that shows that actually year on year for January, demand for electric cars is actually up 39%. Then, however, if you look at general what they call market health and such like, there is a lot more uh, supply. So there's a lot more cars uh, which actually means if you look at market health conditions, uh, you'll see negative numbers. It's come down compared to last year, but that's because there just were not enough cars last year. So we had demand, but a shortage of cars. Now we've got, uh, still up, up, demand is higher. So people do still want EVs, but there is more cars. And um, so depending on which numbers you look at, uh, you can pick off ones which look negative, which the media might use, or people against EVs to make things look negative but the demand for EVs is up 39% from January last year. So, I hope that's been useful and interesting. We'll call it a quick roundup there, and I'll try and do kind of something similar at the end of each month, or just after the end of each month, uh, to pick off any kind of key topics and new stories from that month. So, um, there we go, solar's going well. EV demand is up. It's been a bit turbulent. It is hard to value cars because uh, prices have been fluctuating, especially in the Tesla market. Uh, but nonetheless, we're getting calls and emails every day. It's quite busy. Sales aren't doing too bad at all. So the EV demand is there. That's it from, now, from me for now. See you on the video very soon.